Shine and Neil, this is a shout out video to you. Thank you very much for sending Don and I that wonderful video of your foraging there at your great granddad's place in Michigan. It was good fun. I wasn't able to recognize all of the mushrooms in there because you just there are some details that you gotta actually look at very closely to distinguish accurate species. So I'm going to go over some of the mushrooms that I recognized real quick and I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to give you some tips on narrowing down what kind of mushroom you had. You know, you guys mentioned uh, the black mushroom that you had. This fuzzy little booger is called Old Man of the Woods. Now this is an edible mushroom, but in order to eat it, you first have to prepare it. Now this is considered a bolete. A bolete is a mushroom that the fertile surface or underneath what drops its spores has pores rather than gills. This would be an example of gills. See these gills that move? These are gills. These are pores. Now in order to eat your old man of the woods you break the stem off and you cut them in half and then you pull out these pores because they're not very good to eat and then you eat just the hat most of the meat came with this one but this is a rather old specimen but you get rid of the pores and then you eat that it's not a very good mushroom but it is an edible mushroom now you had a lot of vase shaped and cup shaped mushrooms and you made comments about one of them being a cup shaped mushroom. That mushroom resembled a milk cap and the way to tell that you have a milky is by cutting it and you'll see milk exude from its pores. See the milk starting right here at the stem. Now some milk caps are edible and some milk caps aren't milk caps have gills that exude a latex or milk looking fluid and when this mushroom gets old it will vase up and look like a cup and it will also darken and a lot of them that I seen and recognized as definitely a milk cap now whether or not they were edible milk caps I don't know because I'd have to look at them closely one way to know is to snip right where the stem and the cap meet and if it smells like fish and it has this latex and it stains brown after being cut then you have the apricot milky and that is an edible mushroom other mushrooms that i seen you had you mentioned the red mushroom these are all rasulas all of these are rasulas this brown one is a rasula and this green quilted rasula. Now rasulas are a very difficult mushroom to accurately distinguish down to the species because you would need a microscope to do it and they're still being studied. But one way to know that you have a rasula is its round shape, the brittle gills, and it usually breaks like chalk. Now rasulas 
aren't a species that are very good to eat and there are some toxic rasulas. And a lot of mushroom hunters don't mess with rasulas because it's hard to distinguish exactly what species it is. Again, the stalk breaks like chalk instead of splinters or is stringy and the gills are brittle. And this particular mushroom has been named brittle gill but several other rasulas have been nicknamed brittle gill as well. Next you mentioned cinnabars. Now one way to tell a chanterelle and this is a chanterelle too from other mushrooms is the these structures here on the fertile surface resemble gills but they're not gills they are folds or ridges and one way to tell a chanterelle is they're stringy and the gills themselves the false gills are attached to that skin they don't break apart like the gills on other mushrooms if you see they aren't a part of the actual mushroom they're not part of the skin that's why on a chanterelle they're called false gills this being cantharellus sibaris and this being cantharellus cinnabaris the cinnabar chanterelle and the golden chanterelle this mushroom some people might mistake for a cinnabar and it's not it has gills and you see the gills and the skin are two different things whereas the chanterelle has the false gills this is a toxic mushroom and last but not least we have puffballs now there are several different kinds of puffballs that we eat the gem studded puffball which is this one the giant puffball and the pear-shaped puffball and when you cut a puffball just because it's edible don't mean you can eat the one you found. You have to cut it in half and make sure that it's pure white on the inside. If it's not turning yellow or orange or brown and it's pure white, you can eat it. You have to cook any mushroom you find in the wild first. But I really enjoyed your video and I appreciate you guys sending me that video with the foraged mushrooms you found. Anyway, safe and happy foraging, Shine and Neil. <laughs> Hi, Shine and Neil. I'm going to show you false turkey tail. And down here on this log is false turkey tail. And this is how you can tell the difference between false turkey tail and true turkey tail. False turkey tail just grows all over the log. They grow in different spots and all of that. True turkey tail grows around in a circle like shingles and they layer on top of each other and turn into like a flower. False turkey tail does not do that. Another way to tell it's false turkey tail is that it is kind of hard on the top of it and kind of dry feeling. And most of the time, um, they will be brown, dark brown, or kind of a orangey brown. And on the bottom of it will be brown itself. True turkey tail is all white on the bottom. I have a piece right here, I'll show you. So here is the top of a false turkey tail. It's usually brown or rusty brown and on the bottom, you're gonna see it will be all brown here. On a true turkey tail, it will be a very light brown to a gray or a purple or a plum color sometimes, blue. And what they do is they start forming rings around that look like a real turkey tail. And it feels like feathers on top. It gets real fuzzy and smooth and it's soft to touch. And on the bottom of a real turkey tail will be completely white. Hope that helps you.